So uh, why are you running again? You were in the Senate for three terms after serving four years in the House. Why do you want to go back to the Senate, and why do you want to go back as an independent? Well, I think I could make a difference in terms of ending the poisonous deadlock between Republicans and Democrats in our Congress. Uh, I think that uh, if, well, we, we now have two independents in, in the Senate, if we could get one or two more, if we start to build some critical mass, there'd be kind of a swing group in the middle who would be able to break some of these deadlocks. I think, for example, that Senator Angus King of Maine has done a terrific job on the recent budgetary matters in working with both sides. So that is the main objective. A second one is that uh, as a Vietnam veteran, I feel very strongly that we spend too much money on military operations overseas. I want us to be strong. I want us to have a strong national defense. But we basically have to modernize our military in terms of uh, not spending. So both Democrats and Republicans vote for a lot of things that even the Pentagon doesn't want. So that's something I would like very hard to help bring us to a balanced budget. Uh, and then there are several other issues that I want to work on very much, and I could do it better as an independent than as a Republican or a Democrat. When you travel now around South Dakota, and you have a, a ranch there, you have a home there, uh, have not left your, lost your roots at all in South Dakota, do you find, like yourself, that um, more and more people are kind of fed up with the Democratic Party or the Republican Party and, and kind of want to be somewhere in the middle? Well, there's been a study recently by the uh, by the Humphrey Institute. People in the Upper Midwest do uh, they do like the party system basically in their voting behavior. Uh, generally speaking, we've had some independence mm -hmm. in the region. There's Jesse uh, up in uh, Jesse Minnesota, Ventura. Jesse right. Ventura up in Minnesota, and some others independents who have done well. But generally speaking, people would rather stick with Republican or Democrat. So I'm having I'm making the difficult argument that at this time in our history, we need more independence or at least another independent, in the United States Senate to see if we can break this deadlock, this poisonous deadlock between Republicans and Democrats. The problem is uh, independents are not accustomed to giving money. They're not accustomed. Uh, part of the reason they're independents is because they don't like politics. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and so as I go about, everybody says, oh, great, it's wonderful that you're running as an independent. That's such a good thing for our country at this moment. But they don't write out the checks the way Republicans <laughs> and Democrats do. So I'm having a very difficult time in fundraising. But I'm making up for it with a, a a, a sort of a new kind of a volunteer. Uh, we're going to have a very low budget campaign, and I think we will win. You, uh, so you're. It, it's kind of a learning process, right, for people to say, hey, "This is why uh, having independence is important." And the only way independence can get there is if you help them, right? They've got to. Yes, I'm, a, yes. I'm keeping a small journal called "Running as an Independent" about the the contradictions. Uh, now, everybody says that we need a, sort of a new uh, political movement. Uh, everybody says we've, we've got to end the, the fact that the two political parties are mainly sieves of money. I mean, if you're the Republican or the Democratic candidate in South Dakota, you just get a huge, you get millions of dollars from out-of-state sources, and I will get none of that. But uh, at some point, the public also has been very apathetic. The public's got to wake up and start voting for what they say they believe in, and I'm giving the voters, of uh, the, uh, the the people of South Dakota, the chance. Now, to you have also said that uh, your candidacy is refreshingly different, uh, not only because you're running as an independent, but as I understand it, you have vowed that if elected, you would run, serve only one term. Why? Yes. Well, I'm 71 years of age, first of all, I'm in great shape, and I've t said to my younger opponents that uh, should they like a five-mile run uh, if they feel I'm too old, uh, I'm ready. I do that every day. So, uh, so I've challenged them to a five-mile run. But in any event... That, that'd uh, be a good... Uh, yeah, I'd like to see that. We yeah. could, no, we could settle it that way. You know, yes, just yes. have a little... Um, yes, yes. But in any 5K event, and I'm really not dying miler. to go back into the Senate uh, per se because it's hard work, it's tough work, it's a tough place to be. I've been there for three terms, so I'm not really building my resume, and this will really sound strange. Strange, but I believe I'm doing this out of dedication to my country and to South Dakota. Uh, I've, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I've been privileged with a number of things in my lifetime, a Rhodes Scholarship a Rhodes and so Scholar. on, and et cetera, et cetera, and uh, having spent 22 years in Congress. And, and my wife says I should be enjoying retirement with our four grandchildren. But uh, she's gone along with this, although somewhat reluctantly, but now she's enthused. But the, the but point— why one term? Why, why only one term? Okay, one term, because I would not have to raise any money during that term. 
I would not be running for re-election. Senators spend about half their time actually raising money, and I just hate that. And I just hate the part of raising money for this campaign. But if I get elected, I'll have six glorious years of being in the United States Senate with a clear pledge to serve only one term, and I will not have to raise that money or angle my career uh, or, or, or try to become chairman of the Commerce Committee again or something like that where you have to right. jockey around in the in the, in your caucus. Uh, I will be able to be a United States senator. Well, you know, that I, from what I've, the, the members of the, of the House and the senators whom I know, and I lo- know a lot of them personally, they all hate having to raise that money. But you're right. They spend half of their time not in that office, not studying policy, not, 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 not becoming, you know, um, getting a better grasp of the issues. They spend them at offices which are nearby, arrange for them so they yes. can go there and dial for dollars. And they hate it, but they do it. And what you're saying, as I hear you saying, is I'm just not going to do it. Yes, right? and, and w- a lot of people are seeing the movie American Hustle now, and I've been getting a lot of uh, interviews uh, about that and okay. so forth, but uh, uh, the point is everybody thinks everybody spends all their time in Washington raising money in one form or another, legally or illegally, and they're right to some extent. So, uh, and, uh, and you know, there was a, a senator once from... California, who in his last, Senator Kekel said in his last term, at the beginning of his last term, he said, I'm not going to raise any money, I'm just going to be a United States senator. And then he lost the next election because he didn't have any money raised. Uh, but I'm not going to run more than once. And this is hard, to, it's hard for me to run once because I've already got that on my resume. I mean, I've already been yeah. a United States senator. And uh, it's, a, it's a tough job. So uh, you are being too humble here, Senator. You mentioned American Hustle, American Hustle. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's all about the ABScam scandal here uh, in the 70s that rocked the United States Senate because uh, as part of a sting operation, uh, federal uh, investigators came in and uh, dressed some of them as Arab sheikhs. Uh, they did this with some local politicians in New Jersey and United States senators and offered them bribes uh, for certain votes. Uh, and some of them accepted those bribes and went to prison. There was one United States senator who was offered a bribe, and he said, get out of here, I won't take it. Senator Larry Pressler, right? Well, I mean, that, so that's very kind of you. Yes, that's what the Washington Post no, said. That's, you, and, and they wrote it again. You be damn uh, proud uh, of that. And uh, yes, uh, I right. guess I am. I'm a little hesitant, though, to go out to, uh, campaigning and saying, vote for me because I turned a bribe down. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that, I'm not sure uh, that's, that's a little a, bit of a stretch. I'm not sure uh, that's but, a good bumper sticker, but, but it's good. But, it's a good thing but, to be able to, to, but, to say, and people should but know it. American Hustle is connected in this way, is that People believe quite correctly that uh, most people are ra- are forced to have yep. to raise money. One, if I get back into the Senate, I will not have to raise a dime in my limitation of one year. I'm pledged, absolutely ironclad, written it out. I'll serve only one term, and uh, I will not raise any money during that term. You did not. Uh, you didn't get a walk on roll. Walk uh, walk on roll in American Hustle, huh? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Uh, the people who. Uh, who turned things Are down? Are you portrayed uh, in the movie? Uh, well, there's one composite figure that might that might include oh. me. They really weren't uh, exact. Uh, I, I guess I, I don't know. Nobody ever asked yeah. me. I, I'm not a movie maker. But there's one composite figure who turned the bribe down at first, and they say, "Well, that's." A, uh, uh, I mean, I turned it down. Period. Yeah. Uh, and uh, took uh, took uh, took different steps. Uh, but uh, so I got a lot of pr- I got 15 minutes of immense praise. Walter Cronkite called me a hero, and I said I don't consider myself a hero for turning down a bribe. And there were different. Uh, uh, so, but uh, the, uh, the Sioux Falls TV station played my tape. It was quite, I didn't I don't even have a copy of it. I'm I'm, I'm going to get a copy of it. But uh, it is the movie is relevant because it tells us that what uh, what people think about Washington in terms of fundraising. The United States senators have to spend half their time raising money. Mm-hmm. You know, you got the Democratic caucus and the Republican caucus. You're there as an independent. Who do you sit down with? Who do you caucus with? Well, the Senate rules provide that uh, an independent can be an independent and get two committees. Uh, they also, uh, an independent can caucus with either party. And you can change what you're, that is, if I were to caucus with the Republicans, I could uh, caucus with the Democrats after two years or change of course, the caucus has to invite you to, to join them. Oh. Uh, uh, but uh, if neither caucus invites you, you can be... But probably we'll have a closely divided Senate, and, and it could well be that uh, that I would be sought uh, to some extent by so both caucuses. So Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator Angus King, who are now the two independents, they caucus with the Democrats, right? 
That is correct. So, but you haven't. Uh, I've not made a commitment. I will see. When I'll do like I'm. I'm kind of modeling myself on Senator Angus King of Maine, who didn't really decide until he uh, until okay. the night before he had to. Could you caucus like with the Republicans one day and the Democrats the next day? Or well, no, you? that would be a little too clever. In that the caucus <laughs> has to take you in. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, theoretically, you could. Yes, yes, you could. Now yes. I know we have a secret ballot in this country. So um, I, um, someone, nevertheless, um, a little bird whispered to me that you are um, know President Obama pretty well uh, for a long time, and you actually voted for him twice. That is correct. I voted for him for conservative reasons, actually, but I'll, I'll be glad to tell you. What do you mean? Well, when uh, Obama first ran, he said that he was going to get us out of these foreign wars. And I was afraid John McCain would get us into more foreign wars. So, and uh, so I more or less take the libertarian position that we need to have a foreign presence, and we need to be uh, reaching, extending American power out. But we need to do it with a modernized military. We need to bring our bases home from Europe. I was a Fulbright professor in Italy, and right next to the uh, the, the university was the American, a huge American army base in northern Italy, mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. among the wine fields. But we don't. It, it's a World War II fort. It's a waste of money. We're wasting taxpayers' money with these overseas military expenditures. We should either close that fort or relocate it back to South Dakota or someplace in the United States where it will stimulate our own economy. So um, uh, uh, that was Obama's position. Oh, he hasn't followed through with that. The second conservative position that Obama had that uh, I liked was on the Patriot Act. Obama actually voted against the Patriot Act in the Senate or against the cloture right. on it. Uh, on the grounds that he wanted two amendments that would protect the uh, r- rights of surveillance. And since I was um, a, uh, I was surveilled in Abscam, uh, and I came out just fine, but the point is that's always made me very sensitive about uh, the, how powerful the government is in terms of... Do you think he's followed through on that as president? No. He, uh, I've been disappointed. I mean, I, I, I like uh, Barack Obama. He's a, he will come out much better in the end. He's going through a rough patch right now, but he basically, uh, his, his speech to the Democratic com- Convention back when he was a senator was a libertarian speech. His speeches in his first campaigns were libertarian speeches in terms of foreign uh, military involvement and in terms of in, uh, uh, preserving what's different about America. And let me ask you this, as if, I, if I can. You were a senator in the in late 70s and the 80s, Republican senator. Is the Republican Party you see today the same Republican Party you belong to? No, the Republican Party has left me. On, on, uh, on civil rights, uh, I am a co-signer of the um, uh, amicus to the Supreme Court on gay marriage supporting it, and we succeeded. I was one of 120 uh, uh, who signed that. The, uh, the, that is basic civil rights. We now have gays in the military, and I feel strongly that uh, that's a civil rights issue. In my state, we have uh, our Native Americans. We have a lot of Somalians coming. We have a lot of uh, Hispanics coming into our state of South Dakota, and we have to be very careful on civil rights. We cannot become known as the Mississippi of the North. So that's one thing that I've been very outspoken on all my life. I marched with Martin Luther King when I was a young man, and I was a co-sponsor of the Equal Rights Amendment for women, or women mainly in line when I was in the Senate, and I've always been very strong on civil rights. So I feel the party hasn't moved in that direction. The second thing is that Republicans actually vote for bigger deficits because they vote for corporate subsidies. Republicans vote for all, and Democrats do too, vote for all military spending and they vote for corporate subsidies. So therefore that's why a Republican president's deficits are frequently uh, higher than a Democratic president's deficits. And in particular, the Republican Senate votes for much higher deficits. And I'm I'm in the Fix the Debt group, the uh, Simpson-Bowles group, uh, I'm a volunteer uh, on the Congressional Advisory Committee, and the problem uh, with the deficit has come from the no new tax pledge that Republicans have to make, which does away with any, uh, de- it's not the new taxes, it's doing away with the deductions uh, s- s- right. th- that need to be changed. So there are some, some things, but, but the Democrats, uh, I didn't join the Democratic Party because they have a lot of problems too. 